Good day everybody, my name is Agastya Vishnath and today we are going to be talking about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. He is without, without a doubt one of the most skillful, prolific and influential composers of all of classical music and perhaps all of music history in general. His music is still great today and is regarded as some of the most beautiful and elegant music in existence and his name is widely known through whether you listen to classical music or not throughout the world. So today I wanted to take a look at his life, his work and his music and understand what is it about his music that made him so special and what aspects of his life came into his music and what what are the characteristics of his music and how do they fit into the classical period. So without further ado, let's get into Mozart's life. Now Mozart was born in Salzburg in 1756 in January and he was born to Leopold Mozart who was his father and Leopold Mozart was a fairly a fairly mediocre court musician and court composer though he did have a bad for music and wanted to pass down his musical skill to his children and make them great musicians as well now they Mozart's father and mother had many children However, only two of them survived, that being Mozart and his sister. Now, when his sister turned seven, his father started teaching her some basic piano. This is the age that his father thought was right to teach children about music. Now, Mozart, as reported by his family, was about three years old at this period in time and would watch his father teaching his sister. And he would try to replicate it in some sense and would try Play, playing at third intervals and be happy whenever he hit a consonant interval and was generally quite interested in the clever chord and showed some very basic level skill with it as well. Seeing this interest and this very basic level of skill, Mozart's father thought it would be almost like an experiment or a game to teach him a little bit of piano. So he taught him some basic minuets and some basic pieces and immediately noticed how easily Mozart took them up. Mozart was in always regarded as always been regarded as a prodigy, a child genius. And this was ever apparent when he first picked up the piano. He was able to play things fluently and in time the first time he tried them and that's something that a lot of him does struggle to do. It was quite profound and quite amazing and that's something that surprised his father and sister. His father continued to teach Mozart quite intently and Mozart even started composing his first simple pieces at the age of five. It's disputed whether it's five or four, however they do that's recognizing that period. That's when he started composing his first pieces, and his father would write them down for him. And Mozart just kept on amassing more and more musical skill, and kept on wanting to compose more and more, and became more and more skillful in that field as well. His father quickly started to take advantage of the fact that he had two very very skillful and very very young musicians in his family, and decided to go on tour in about 1762 when Mozart was quite young and his sister was a bit older, um, showing off both his children as child prodigies because they were and this tour was fairly successful and Mozart especially gained a lot of fame during this tour because he was able to play with an adult level of skill at just age 7. He was, he really stole the stage and he was he immediately became quite famous throughout Europe. This tour which consisted of Mozart's father, his sister and himself lasted for around about 1762 to the 1769 period. After this, as I said, Mozart has gained Mozart. The spotlight was based on Mozart, and he gained quite a lot of fame. So his father left his sister and mother alone and went with Mozart for a second tour, which lasted from 16, 1769 to 1771, about three years to two, two to three years. And during this tour, Mozart amassed even more fame. Well, he was slightly older at this period in time, about 13 to 14 years old, and he amassed much more fame, and of course became much more skilled at the piano, the violin, the other instruments and also took up a much stronger um, passion for composing. Indeed, during this tour he met many different musicians and composers and tried to learn from them and adopted some of their musical styles in his own compositions and got himself acquainted with that community quite extensively. Now, after having finished his tours as a child prodigy, 
Mozart followed after his father and took up a position at the Salzburg court as a court musician. Now Mozart stayed here for about uh, four years and during his time he composed lots of famous works. He worked on violin concertos yeah, and he wrote five of them in one go and that's one of the most, that's of course all amazing pieces in their own right and outstanding repertoire for violins today. He also started writing piano concertos, something which would become very, um, very, very, uh, one of his most acclaimed series of pieces is piano concertos and he started writing in the this period when he was working for the Salzburg court and he also wrote his 25th symphony which is one of his most famous symphonies during this period. He was, this was quite a major period for him to write music and he wrote quite a bit of music during this period quite, and he started off writing in multiple different forms during this period. However, as he worked for Salzburg court more and more, he started to look at it upon, look upon it with disdain. He didn't enjoy it all that much and he was starting to not like his job at all. This happened for multiple reasons. Firstly, the salary that he was obtaining was not all that much. It was quite modest and Mozart was not very happy with that. Secondly, the, he longed to write an opera. He had written multiple short operas when he was a child. Even when he was 20 years old, he wrote his first opera. But he longed to write operas. And that's something which he, was, he would become very famous for in the future. And the, uh, not only were operas not that played in Salzburg, but the, uh, the theater, the local theater also shut down. So the chances of writing and putting on an opera were next to zero. So due to multiple of these factors, many of these factors, Mozart decided to leave his job in Salzburg and migrate elsewhere and search throughout Germany and Europe and France for a job. Now, during this struggle for a job, he couldn't find any. He, he searched quite, Mozart searched quite tirelessly for a job and was unable to find any jobs. There will always be some people note that there were some prospects here and there, but in the end, he did not obtain a job at all. And while he was searching, and he also faced multiple financial hardships due to this lack of employment from multiple different sources. Now, during this period, while he was searching for jobs in France and in um, the surrounding areas, his father was back in Salzburg and tried to obtain a better job in the court for him and succeeded. He got um, a higher position in the court, uh, musical wise, and was given a higher salary. And Mozart was at first, and he was offered the job. Now Mozart was at first very reluctant to um, take out his job as, because, as I said, he did not. He did not want to go to back to Salzburg. He didn't like that place for multiple reasons. But and he did one last search everywhere and tried to open a job but failed. So in the end, he just reluctantly agreed and joined that job. And he came back to Salzburg and worked there as per the request of his father. Now, while he was searching for his job in France, he wrote multiple notable pieces, the A minor piano sonata, the Paris symphony, and the concert of flute and harp. Now, after having arrived back in Salzburg, he worked for the court for some extended period of time. However, after having arrived back in Salzburg, his employer went to Vienna, and he moved, he don't move, he momentarily migrated to Vienna because he had some business there, and he took Mozart along with him uh, because he, he simply wanted his musical helper along, along with his side. However, for in, in 1781, for a year Mozart struggled to wrestle free of his um, employment and wanted to permanently stay in Vienna. And this was where Mozart broke off from his father. His father was very content on Mozart working in Salzburg and continuing his court job there. And ever having already tried to leave it once, this time Mozart after lots, lots of struggle during the year 1781, finally managed to shake off and resign from his job as court musician in Salzburg and stayed in Vienna. And his employer went back and he remained in Vienna. And this was actually, this is when most people re, um, account that Mozart became his own man and came into his own and his music became about him and not about the court and not about his father. And this is really where he broke free from his father's influence and became his own man, came into his own, as, so to speak. And during this period in time, he once again struggled to find a job. He couldn't really find much of a job for quite a long period of time, and even never could find minor jobs. But thankfully, his freelance career flourished quite well in this. Uh, during this period, this is about 1782 uh, to 1787, and during this period, he worked not only as a virtuoso pianist, as a freelance virtuoso pianist, because he was 
well, as I said, Alberto tools a pianist. He was quite he was quite adept at the piano, but his co compositions also gained quite a lot of traction, and he became quite famous as a composer. So his works he would compose works, and those works would be performed. But he wasn't under the employment of anyone, so to speak. During this period, 1782 to 1787, he wrote his famous Mass in C minor. He wrote the six quartets dedicated to Haydn because he met Haydn during this period, and he also wrote his piano concertos. Some more piano concertos. He's written quite a few, and the fourth batch came when he was working in Salzburg. The next batch of piano concertos came during this time. Then we have when the 1786 to 1787 period. During this period, Mozart was um, moving away from the classical form for piano and sonatas, concertos, symphonies, and he was more he wanted to focus on opera now. And he wrote two of his most famous operas, that being. Don Giovanni and the Marriage of Figaro. These two operas are some some of the most famous operas in all of their existence and are still widely performed today. Have uh, musical pieces. They're, they're musically quite amazing, quite loved, and also from a narrative standpoint, they made quite interesting stories. And as I said, they're some of the most famous operas and performed today. Now, during this period, Mozart also um, married and had, uh, and had, of course, had children and. He, this was a very lucrative period for Mozart. As I said, he was quite a successful virtuoso pianist and composer during um, the 1780s, essentially. And he took advantage of this. And Mozart, I won't mention this now, maintained a very, very childish personality and attitude ever since, yeah, even after he grew up. And this is much like what many people display after they've earned a lot of fame as a child. He was quite childish and irresponsible till adulthood. And this, this is this. Um, sort of cheeky childish person, personality which has multiple you can see this in multiple pieces of work, his attitude and some of his pieces as well um, this childish attitude of course translated to how he spent money as well he would always spend it as fast as he could make it so the minute he started a very lucrative um, business in the form of his virtuoso, um, his virtuoso performances he also spent money that fast and he, he and his wife took up a very very lavish lifestyle hired servants and sent his children off to very expensive schools and as much money as they were making, they spent it immediately. So saving was out of the question. And this was an extreme problem because as Mozart's health started to decline towards the later years of his life, I say later years, but of course Mozart died at 35, so I don't know, 20s, um, his health started to decline and he was unable to play as many concerts, he was not able to play as many concerts and this, and in combination with a couple of other factors, made his income plummet very, very fast. This was around 1788 where his income started to plummet and his fame also went down quite a bit and this is where he started losing a lot of money and his financial crisis started. He was begging from loans from his friends and he was pawning off his valuables and multiple other problems happened here. During this sort of really pull, pull down like financial crisis, he did write some actually extremely famous works his symphony number 39, symphony number 40 and his symphony number 41 all in the year of 1788. He wrote them in one volume and those are some of the most famous symphonies till date, especially symphony number 40. Yeah, one of, probably one of his most famous symphonies, symphony number 40. Regardless, he he wrote this but then he was going under, he was going on financial crisis and due to that he also started going under personal crisis with many speculating that during this period in time Mozart was depressed and there's quite a lot of evidence to suggest that. However, one year before he died, that being 1790, he took up sort of personal recovery and he started, so during this 1788 and 1789, he was, his composing also came to quite a grinding halt. He composed the three symphonies, but not all that much, not all that much else. Mozart had always been, was, was a very prolific composer, he would compose large amounts of work, his output would be at a very fast rate in very large quantities. That slowed down exponentially during this personal and financial crisis that he had in 1788 and 1789. However, in, during 1790, many speculate he made sort of a personal recovery from this crisis and he started writing lots of music again. Most notably, he wrote The Magic Flute, which is one of the most famous, one of, what did I say, one of the, it is the most famous opera. <laughs> it, that's controversial to say, but it's one of the most famous operas ever. It is, so Don Giovanni and Marriage of Figaro are already mentioned. Magic Flute is even more recognized than that. It's probably one of the most performed operas it's got a very very famous aria in it and it's played everywhere and it's very universally recognized as one of Mozart's best masterpieces, especially in the operatic form. 
and he was and they were doing this period he started composing something which are uncharacteristic for his style and his time and magic flute was one of them especially with its slightly weirder story line in addition to this he also composed his last piano concerto which many describe to be a masterpiece it is a masterpiece he also composed multiple string quintets and the clarinet concerto and which are all amazing pieces in their own right of course hallmarks uh, in classical music and just before he died just before he died he left one piece which he was writing unfinished and that was a requiem a requiem a mass for death both are requiem this piece is shrouded in lots of controversy there's a lot of controversy who of who commissioned it who asked for it and this mass in death he left unfinished and it was finished by one of his students and was extremely uncharacteristic for his style it was you this rest of Mozart's music is cheeky, it's um, joyful, it's light, it's elegant, the requiem is none of that. The requiem is a much deeper, darker, and it had depth, something that a lot of other lot of other uh, lot of other Mozart's pieces did not have. And the requiem is really stepping out of what Mozart would usually do. So that's why this piece sort of shrouded in controversy. Regardless, this was the last piece that Mozart wrote and he died around about 1791 uh, 1791 was when he died and he died at the age of 35 so while I have been this has been a very long journey in his life he of course he lived a very very eventful life but a very very short life and half a lifetime he died at 35 due to um, major illness many speculated it was a very high fever or that it was a, say, a, it was a kidney problem but there is no concrete answer for the illness that killed him but he died due to severe illness at 35 and he wrote over 600 pieces, slightly over 600 pieces in half a lifetime and many things that we were robbed. Like imagine how many pieces we were robbed of if he had just lived a full lifetime for that, for that area which is about 60 years, he would have composed maybe double that much and we would have had so much more music to talk about today. Regardless due to illness and perhaps some ill lifestyle choices that Mozart chose to adopt, he died around about 35 years old in 1791. Now let's come to Mozart's music and this is something very very this is where talking about Mozart becomes very important because so his music is very 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 influenced or defined by the classical period or classicism or perhaps it's the other way around where his music was what ended up defining the classical period and what his music was when was what classicistic music became because indeed when we look back to the classical period we see made two main, mainly two main composers, that being Joseph Haydn and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And both of these composers sort of broke off from the Baroque period and started the classical period and were their hallmarks. And during the classical period in music, there were many ideas explored. And when we look back to see music for the classical period and try to analyze it and see what elements are there, we turn to one of these composers, either Joseph Haydn or Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. So it may, in fact, be that not if not Mozart was influenced by classicism which was the prevailing um, period at uh, that point in time but perhaps it's his music that ended up defining the entire flow of music during the time that he was alive. Regardless, classicism was, as I said, quite a bit about uh, aristocratic entertainment and this is very much embodied in, in Mozart's music. His music is light, it's elegant, it's simplistic, it's beautiful. These are all words I would use to describe his music. It's, and it exudes elegance and aristocracy and that's what Mozart was going for. Um, in addition to, uh, as I mentioned, of course it was light and elegant, but it was also extremely simplistic and simple. His music was not overcomplicated. He did not see music as an intellectual challenge. He did not complicate it and cloud it, no. Unlike Bach and Beethoven who sort of, uh, Bach and arguably Beethoven, who sort of, sort of looked at music as an intellectual challenge and would try to come up with complex themes and write and push the boundaries of the few could do. Mozart was different. He wrote, he didn't see it as an intellectual challenge. He saw it as a form of entertainment for his audience. He wanted to write music that was beautiful, that spoke to the heart and that was entertaining for people to listen to. And due to that he wrote it very simplistically. But even though it is simplistic, it is extremely captivating. His music is extremely captivating. It's, it's extremely interesting. It's extremely memorable and it's beautiful. It's beautiful, captivating, memorable, all while being extremely simplistic. And this ability that he had to convey such beauty and such um, 
you create such captivating sounds in such a simple using um, in spite of being inside in spite in such simplicity in spite of the music being so simple was why many people call him the voice of god that his music was god speaking through someone else's body because it is so beautiful and so captivating while being so very simple and when you listen to his melodies it is it's very apparent if you listen to um they are once again very very simple they you'll be surprised by just how rudimentary they are but yet they are so captivating they're so interesting they're beautiful and they're memorable they stick in your head if you listen to symphony number no. 40 if you listen to turkish march if you listen to either kind of music if you listen to a 25th symphony If you listen to his violin concertos, these are all very simple melodies, right? These are all simple melodies, rudimentary, but yet they're so captivating and they're memorable. They stick in your head. Most of the stories for or for being extremely memorable. You listen to it now, stuck in your head, and keeps on playing. And that's something that Mozart was very good at doing. That's what his melodies were. And really, when you look at and yeah, his music achieved so much beauty. And that's often why he's remembered so well because it's simple yet it's beautiful. And when you look at how he wrote music, this is also quite apparent. So he would often have the music fully formed in his head and he would simply write it down. And that's why when you look at the manuscripts, his original writing, so not the you know the, not the sheet music which musicians play, but what he wrote, like what he wrote and then he would give it a sketch to copy, you see it's written in a flow. He just it's it's almost as if the music is fully formed in his brain and he's just writing it down. It's all it's 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 beautiful and it's written in a flow. You don't see any crosses or marks. It's just written and it's beautiful and it's ready. And he would, he would often take advantage of his ability. Notoriously, he wrote the overture to Don Giovanni, which is one of the most famous overtures till date uh, for an opera on the morning of the preview. So it was meant to be um, premiered in the evening of one date and he wrote it in the morning. People performed what he wrote in the morning, in the evening, that was performed, and that was his deadline. And he was able to write it just in the morning of the premiere because he was able to write in this flow. And that was something that was quite, something that he was quite capable of doing. And he had all these ideas that he was able to communicate so well. And once again, because his music is beautiful and captivating, and it just speaks so very well to the heart, yet it's so simple, is why he is remembered so much. Of course, he was this child prodigy that helped him propel himself to fame, but his music is why he's remembered. That his music is what performed today. That's his legacy. His legacy is not the fact that he was a child prodigy, but his legacy is his music. And when we listen to his music, it still continues to captivate us. It's, it's still, we still are left in awe in his beauty. And that's just, and, and we're also um, surprised by how very rudimentary it is. So that, uh, that, Absence of complexity adds a comp adds completely another aspect to it, and that's why we call him such a genius because he's able to convey all these. Um, he's able to wow audiences with such simple and wow and empath audiences and captivate them with such simple musical ideas, and that's why he's really called such a musical genius. Bach could be called a musical genius because of how complex his music was, how intellectually advanced he was able to convey through his music. But then Mozart's called a musical genius not because his music was complex but because his music was simple and yet it was so captivating and yet everyone still listens to it and that, in my opinion that's why Mozart is such a genius and that's why his music speaks um, so much even today and that being said that's all I really have to say about Mozart um, as I said he was one of the most influential composers most I don't we don't need to 
talk that much about Mozart's fame because it's self-explanatory. But I think the evidence is that the fact that his music is still played today, everywhere, and everyone continues to listen to it and still loves it and still it still wants to listen to more of it, even though he died what some 200 years ago. So I think that's the real beauty of it. And yeah, he is definitely one of the most prolific and influential figures in all of music history. Being said, I hope you learned something valuable from this short recitation on Mozart and hope we can hopefully continue next. Uh, thank you very much and see you in the next video.